Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome to a very special video. Today I'm going to be showing you the team that I picked for the FM League, which starts next week. Uh, for those of you that missed it, we streamed it on Ben's Twitch channel. Um, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and watch the draft if you missed it. Uh, for those of you who did see it, you'll know that um, I got the 6th pick, I think. And by the time I sort of started getting my picks, I was in a sort of a bad position. But I think I got a fairly good squad. It's not overpowered. It's not um, statistically the best. But I think I got the best out of what I could, considering the position I was in. Uh, so I'll take you through the squad. And, yeah, I'll leave everyone's links in the description also to the other seven that are going to be taking part. I won't go through them because I'm sure I'm going to out by accident. Um... So, yeah, I'll leave leave their links in the description below. And, yeah, let's uh, have a look at the squad that I picked. Okay, so I'll go through the goalkeepers first, then into the defence midfield, and then finally we'll finish with the forwards. Uh, so my number one goalkeeper, I think, is going to be Azmir Begovic. Ideally, I would have liked Courtois, but I think two picks before me. I think Ben got him, actually. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Ben. Um, but he went just before I picked Begovic. He was pretty much, I think he was probably the best keeper I could have got at the time that I got him. Looking at him now, statistically, he's actually very, very good. Um, good mentals, fantastic um, physicals, and also pretty good technicals too. So I think overall at six foot five as well, he's going to be a very good goalkeeper for us. Um, so I think he's definitely going to be my number one keeper. My backup keeper is going to be Ben Foster. Um, again, looking at him now, technically very good, uh, physically slightly older, but I think, ow, sorry, <laughs> I think he's probably going to be a really good backup for me, hopefully I won't have to use him much, um, but yeah, just a, a standard backup keeper, I think, very good, probably West Brom's number one, so good to have as a backup for me. Okay, so I'm not doing these in any particular order, I'm just going to do them in the order that I've got them written down that were picked. Um, first centre-back is Gary Cahill. I wanted a quick centre-back because I thought the other centre-back or one of the other centre-backs I was planning on using wasn't going to be as quick. Um, but I won't give too much away. But Gary Cahill, technically very good. You know, good good tackling, marking, uh, heading. We can also got a good first touch and really good passing too. Also technically very good. Uh, mentally, absolutely sound and physically quick as well. So 6'3", uh, I think, is a very good centre-half. Ah, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> As I've pressed play, I bang my hand. Oh, I'm a nightmare. Uh, the next player we've got is Seamus Coleman. Um, obviously, it was good, um, a good pick for me. I think he's one of the better right-backs in the division. Um, and it shows here as well. He's got you know some fantastic uh, stats. He's got tackling, um, marking, and heading, which is good. And also, for a fullback, he's got work rate, teamwork, determination, stamina, natural fitness, pace. So, you know, I think he's going to be a really good... Good player for us. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be playing wing backs yet, but I, I think it was just important that I had a variety of players. I've not yet made up my mind as to which formation I'm going to be using, so it's just good to have a good variety of players so that I can play any different formation and adapt to any situation that I find myself in. On to Daily Blin now, and as you can see, one of the main reasons that I picked him was just the amount of positions that he can play. He can play anywhere across the back four, he can play anywhere just in front of the back four, and he can also play in a couple of positions uh, in midfield as well. So I think he's going to be a really valuable part of the team, just in case, like I said, I do need to switch up the formation at all. He can play absolutely everywhere. So I think he's going to be a really good addition for us. Still 24 as well, so good age. Um, not that age really matters on this, but I think, you know, um, he's got some really good stats. And I think he's probably going to be an underrated member of my team. The next one, actually, I was really, really happy to get. And I was actually quite surprised that no one had picked him up. Not because he's good in real life, but because statistically on the game, he's got some incredible stats. 19 tackling, 19 marking, 17 heading. Unbelievable mentals. So look, he's got, you know, aggression, anticipation, bravery and composure. Um, determination, positioning, teamwork, work rate. And his physicals actually for 33 are really, really good. Natural fitness is 15. 
um, and is not too slow over at 12 um, pace and 11 acceleration. And, you know, I think he's going to be a really good sign in six foot. Not the tallest, but, you know, he's, he can definitely do a job for us and can also play defensive midfield as well. Next, we have Callum Chambers. And again, another player that can play in, well, almost every position on the pitch. I didn't realise until I've just seen now. Originally, I only thought he could play left back, right back and centre back. I didn't realise he can literally play anywhere on the right-hand side and even just behind the striker as well. So if we do get... Um, you know, a bit desperate, or if we need to change things up, he can actually go there, and he, he's actually a really good cam, look, for 19 years of age, you could actually train this guy in your save to be a really good cam, he's got dribbling, crossing, first touch, passing, technique, he's literally got everything you need, his finishing's nine, he's got good crossing and dribbling if you want him as a wing back, um, incredible uh, physicals too, to start off with, I, I've never really seen how good he is, he could actually be a, a very underrated player, I think, and I think he's one that now looking at is one of the, the more valuable players that I'm going to have. The final defender we've got is Ashley Williams. Um, he's only going to be used as a centre-back, although he can sort of play in other positions. Um, but again, just you know, a really good backup, I think, for us. 5'11", so not the tallest. I always thought he was a little bit taller than that. But again, you know, statistically, I think he's very underrated. And he's one that other players, I think, wanted, but we're going to save him a little bit later. Um, I'm not sure what round I got him in. Although I know it was fairly late on. So I was really happy to get him. Uh, he might even contribute a little bit. But yeah, I was really happy to get him. Okay, so my first... Uh, actually, no, it was my second wildcard pick. Uh, was Marco Royce. I mean, obviously all the best players in the world sort of went the first, um, first couple of rounds. I thought it was quite a good pick at the time. Looking at it now, it's probably a better pick than I thought because he can play just so many different positions. He can also play at front if he needs to. 16 finishing. Um, he's jumping out at me straight away off the ball. Um, good determination. His physicals are unbelievable. So, yeah, I think he was a really good pick. Probably could have gone with someone like Sergio Ramos at the back, but I thought that I was quite confident I could get good defenders and I'm quite happy still with the defenders that I got. I thought... Probably better to go for an attacking player from around the world. I think um, all the decent Premier League ones went quite early, apart from Alexis Sanchez. But at, at the stage, in the second round, I thought it was it was a quite a good pick for me. Next pick was Steven Gerrard, uh, leaving the Premier League at the end of the season. But uh, as age doesn't really matter in this, because it's a one-off game each time we play. Uh, statistically, he's probably one of the best players that I've got and one of the better players in the Premier League all round uh, Statistically, I think um, we've got ourselves an incredible player here. Uh, probably we'll be playing him centre midfield rather than defensive mid because of the other player that I've got you'll see in a minute. Um, but yeah, an incredibly uh, gifted player that I was quite happy to get and I got him quite early too. So my first wildcard pick was Philip Lahm. And at the time, you know, Ronaldo, Messi, Robben, um, all of these players were getting picked. I had the sixth pick, like I said, so there wasn't really much in you know attacking options um although i probably could have gone for someone like hamas rodriguez or something like that but i thought the way that philip lam um mentally and also positionally can play uh, is going to be a big boost for us you know look at the mental stats there's not many people better in the world i don't think uh, technically very gifted as well and physically still not too bad either so again he can play in a number of positions i personally see him playing as a, a defensive midfielder i probably won't be playing him at right back um but, you know, he can play in play there if needed be. And also centre midfield too. So very happy to get him. I think he's going to be a very big player for us. Okay, so next player was Sex Fabregas. And this one I was over the moon with. I think he was quite a few picks in, if I'm not... Yeah, I think he was a few picks in. Uh, I might be wrong on that, but yeah, to get Fabregas, um, you know, one of the best midfielders in the division, I think, by by quite some way. Uh, just look at his amount of assists he's got this season. Going to be looking to get him on the ball as much as possible to try and find that killer pass. But yeah, absolutely over the moon to get Fabregas. And again, he can play just behind the striker. He even says he can play at front. And looking at it now, yeah, he definitely could do a job at front. So again, gives us competition for places. Next player we've got was Eric Lamella. Um, I actually didn't want Lamella at first. I actually wanted Adam Lallana. Although the draw ended up getting, uh, there was a, a, an issue with the draw where someone missed a pick out 
Um, we took a little break, we came back, and they picked Lalana just as I was about to pick him. So I was quite disappointed with that. Um, but I think Lamella, actually, looking at him, is going to gonna do a job out wide if we do play wingers. Um, and I think he's, he's got some, some really good stats for the, for the position that he plays. He's got flair, he's got pace. Um, he's got dribbling, first touch, and you know, all round. I think a good player. Not sure if he'll be starting yet, but I'm sure we'll find a position for him. My final midfielder. Well, I say final midfielder. One of my other players can play midfield uh, as well. One of my strikers. I'll show you him in a second. Um, but the final one was Cl Claudio Jakob or Claudio Jakob from West Brom. I was actually quite surprised he didn't go a lot earlier because he's actually a really good player on this game. Um, mentally very good for a centre midfielder with his work rate. Uh, positioning and teamwork. Uh, technically, tackling, marking, passing is what you want in a centre midfielder. Uh, and physically as well, isn't is not too bad, quite um, well-rounded. So, a, a player that I was really happy to get and actually quite surprised to get. Next player was Romelu Lukaku. L Lukaku? Lukaku, my bad. Um, but again, another one that I was quite surprised to get. Um, statistically very good, an absolute animal with 18 strength. Um, physically incredible. I was really, really happy to get this guy. Uh, again, not sure if he's going to be starting up front due to another striker that I did get. Um, but he's going to give us real competition up front. Um, and again, it gives us an option of playing two up front if we want to. Or even three. Depends what we go with. So really happy to get him. Next player was Mauro Zarate. He was the other guy that I said could play uh, in midfield as well. Looking at it now, he's probably a better suited winger than Lamella. So it gives me a, a lot of room for thought. Um, he can play just behind the striker, he can play up front. I think people have probably seen Spencer's videos. Um, that was one of the main reasons I looked at him and added him quite um, high up on my list. I wanted to get him. I think it was a really solid pick and I was really happy with it. So he's going to be either playing, he'll probably play out wide to be fair. But if I need to, I can always bring him a little bit more central. My final pick that I got was Stefan Jovetic. It was out of him or Loic Remy for me. They were the two available um, I decided to go with Jovetic purely because he can play more positions and I think he's more well-rounded than Remy. Um, he can play just behind the striker. He can probably even play a bit deeper than that looking at his stats, uh, but I probably won't have to play him there. So, But I thought all round, he's probably the better option to go with. Um, and I think on this game as well, he's quite an underrated player that normally scores quite a few goals. So I'll show you my last player. I didn't want to show him um, before the end. I don't know why, actually. I just skipped him out on my list. But yeah, I'll show him now. He wasn't the last pick, but he is the last player in the squad. Okay, so the very last player that we got was Daniel Sturridge. Now, he's probably the best striker that we have got in terms of all-round uh, stats for a finisher. You know, finishing 19, 16 composure, off the ball 16, uh, good technique, and physically unbelievable. Everyone knows what he's like in real life. He can score. Um... You know, a variety of goals. He also play out wide as well. I don't really see him playing wide, but he can play there if we need him to. Again, good variety for places. So, yeah, that is pretty much the squad done. Um, I would have liked to show you an overall. Um, I could show you this actually. This is the uh, I started writing them down and then I got uh, I got bored. I couldn't keep up. Um, but yeah, this is the squad in whole. Um, you've got the goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, and obviously the strikers. So. That is the squad as an overall. I'm quite happy with it, although it's not the best squad out there. Um, it's probably one of the worst ones, to be fair. But statistically, I think the players that I've got um, have got a real chance of putting up a good fight uh, in a lot of the matches that we play. So we'll see how it goes. Let me know what you think of the squad uh, and if you watch the draft as well and who you think is going to win. I'll leave all the, a link to all the squads down below. Um, go and check out all the other guys too. I'll leave a link to their channels, as I said, in the description. Uh, I can't wait for this to get started. I'm really happy to be involved. So thank you to Benji uh, that's organised it all. I know it's a lot of hard work and he's working really hard at the minute. So um, thank you for watching and thank you to everyone that subscribed recently as well. Uh, nearly a thousand now, which I've never hit before um, on any of my previous channels, but I've got to around this mark. So. So a milestone that I've been looking forward to hitting for three years or four years now. So thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button and I'll see you all soon. Peace.